Welcome everyone. Today we'll have a very special meta guide. This guide will show us many many great builds for the new meta and the patch. This will be looking into the alliance build with ace units. We're looking to solve the three star builds. The core concept is that with most combinations there are two routes to the build. One is we can aim for the three stars and we can also level up for the chance of finding the ace of the alliance. We can purposely level up quicker because sometimes our build could be contested. I was playing knights and knights and dragon were contested. I went to the knights and trolls by leveling to level 9. I can play the majors by going for the lich instead of rolling for my 3 star ma majors because more people are playing majors. Similarly with the warriors with the troll warlord, enigma and disruptor. We can also consider to roll at level 6 and 7 for the 3 stars. Then we level up for the additional nines. This is when we are close to 3 stars and we still want to level Sorry, we still want to roll before we level because sometimes it's still beneficial to find those 3 stars. We did that with one of the browning game. It was pretty fancy having 3 star Beastmaster and the 3 star Juggernaut. Now below we're going to look at various team comps. Some of those really like 3 stars. Others would love you know, additional alliance and it's less 3 star dependent. I want to have a variety so you know, we can have so many things to play around with and it's a really good matter right now. The first build we want to look at is the branching potential with trolls and shamans. This can be 2 or 4. Now, those are great and effective 2 alliances, and while we're having the trolls and the shaman, which we use the shadow shaman to great effectiveness, we can grant branch into almost any builds. We can go into hunters, we can go into you know, warriors, we can go into druids, scrappies, knights. Many, many of those can work. What we want to keep in mind is we want to have the chore or the shamans activated while we're at level 8. This increases the rate of finding the alliance ace unit, which is the troll warlord and enigma, by 15% within the legendary range. If we have those activated, more likely we'll find those as the legendary we find, and this activates the build. Now, if you don't find them anytime soon, this might be a little troublesome. So make sure you have those on the bench, no, not on the bench, but on the board while you're rolling for your crucial units. With the four chores, ideally you want to use the chores as the supportive and offensive branch. They can, we can then build for the front lines with warriors, knights, or even four scrappies. We can consider things that tend to do well with attack speed, maybe with hunters. We can consider things that does well with soaking damage, because chores itself, especially with a two-star troll warlord, will do lots of damage. Let's look at some of the less seen variations with the Trolls and Shamans because the following builds will also use Trolls and Shamans so the below ones are the more variety combinations of variation. The first one we have is a Mini Star Hunter plus Troll. It might seem funny at the start but it's actually pretty potent simply because it can use up to 2 or 3 Ace Unit. It can use Medusa, Troll Warlord and also Disruptor at level 9. What we have here is we have Marana for the stun, Tiny for the stun, Tight Hunter for the stun, Witch Doctor for the stun. Medusa can mini stun with a multi shot, Troll can multi stun with the Troll mini stun, and Patch can even, you know, hook someone. So this build is not going to be easy to mature at level 8 simply because we might not be able to find Medusa and Troll. The key is to swap for other units before we find them. We can consider Shadow Shaman, we can consider some form of Warlock, or maybe as a Knight, maybe as a Hunter but we can swap those in once we find them. Also, on the second part, this particular build wants to be leveling up. We want to be level 9 for additional Warlock. We want to be level 10 maybe for as a unit. This also increases the rates for Medusa and Troll Warlock. The next build we have is Shamans plus Druids plus Trolls. This again is a not frequency build because most of us don't consider the Trolls with the Druids, but we can try that because Simply, the Druids give us the early game with enough economy, we can level quicker into the late game. Once we get into the late game, we might have the Summoning Stone while we were leveling with the Druids. We can use Arc Warden and Enigma. We can also consider the Troll with Witch Doctor and Troll Warlord for the Warlock and also for the attack speed. So this brings the second life to the weaker late game Druids. And because we moved into the late game so much faster, we have less requirement for 3 stars. We don't need a 3 star with Shocter, the Druids will naturally become 3 stars, and this gives us the front line. Arc Warden can do the damage, and we can search for the higher tier units at level 9 or even level 10, with maybe another 
disruptor or maybe something else we want to add to the table. Again, we mentioned that key is having summoning stone because we can use summoning stone and venomizer for the transition before we hit to the optimum level with Enigma and Troll Warlock. The next build on the focus is Warlocks. Warlocks has been shining for most builds. This is not a core build, but rather a branch. We want to increase the awareness of how good Warlocks are, I know. <laughs> most of us do run Warlocks. We want to look at potential for Warlocks and what to think about with Warlocks. With 4 Warlocks, we can aim for most of the tier 4 Warlocks, like Necrophos, Alchemist. We can pick up the Disruptor when possible because we have the Alliance activated for the 15% Ace. The key is to have additional Alliance while adding the Warlocks. For example, we can have Heartless with Necro and also Warlock. We can have Scrappy with Alchemist, maybe with a Sniper for the Hunters. We can have the Trolls with Witch Doctor with the Shadow Shaman, which goes into Shamans, or maybe with Troll Warlock. The Warlock with 2 to 3 Warlocks. Now, sometimes once we have the Ace of Warlock, which is Disruptor, we can consider reducing the number of Warlocks for other alliances. We might be overhealing. Sometimes when the Warlock heals in the 2 seconds, they heal so much. Having 3 Warlocks may be enough at times, simply because now we link 2 other units and 3 or 2 is enough. With the Disruptor, Linking 2 means it's basically 3 Warlocks doubles into 6 Warlocks, if you think about that. So, I have seen with 4 Warlocks, sometimes we overheal massively, and after the 2 seconds, it was not enough to do damage. We can swap in more damage units, or maybe just late game legendaries as well. Here we'll be looking at some of the Warlock variations. Again, most of the builds below were used to Warlocks. Here we'll use some of the variations that's more for highlights or more for like, you know, just how strong Warlocks are. So some of those builds are not mentioned in the below. More Warlocks builds will be shown as well. The first one we'll have is 4 Warlocks and 6 Warriors. This is a very underrated build before the patch, now it's getting its popularity. Simply because if you look closely, this is a 10 out of 10 build. <laughs> I know, so super highly rented. So yes, we do require 10 units for this to work, but you do not need all the Warlocks at the start. As mentioned earlier, we can have less Warlocks at the start with our Alchemist, take us to 9, and that is enough at times. This build has 6 Warriors, with a bunch of good alliance and lots of tier 4 and tier 5 units. What that enables us to do is we transition from weaker Warriors like Axe, Tusk, into the later Warriors, into Conquer, Doom, and Tide. We also pick up the Scaled. We're so sufficient, we can heal, we can do damage. And this is one of my favorite builds as well. The position wise, patch is to hook units that goes for the back line and also from this side. This is a focus damage side and this is the they hold them while we kill the rest of here side. So we want the units conquer, tie the disruptor to cast fast in the front. The second line of units wants to cast as well, but not so urgently. The third line is where damage goes and where range units goes. So yes, for the late game balance, we only need two stars for this build. Next build we have is 4 Warlocks and 4 Scrappy, 4 Inventors. This build is often tried by players who like Warlocks, and even after the change of Warlocks into 2 seconds, they're still very effective. The highlight here is if we don't find Techies or Gyrocopter, we can use the 4 Scrappies, but then once we find the Techies or Gyro, they become so much stronger with the Inventor Ace of Techies and Disruptor. We can use the Gyro as well, for the ninth unit, or maybe just under the 2 star unit, maybe a 2 star techies or something else. The highlight here is how Disruptor is the only controller in this build, so he has to get the most mana, cast fast, to enable us to cast our spells. If we get stunned, or if something happens to us, it's over. We need the heals, we need the burst damage, we need everything. So because of that, Disruptor is the core unit here, and before we find the Disruptor, maybe just get some form of stuns. Or if we can overpower the enemy with a pure 3 stars, it can also work. So yeah, this build has great AoE, healing and explosions. With Inventors, we can explode many many things. The next build we have is Knights. This can be 2 Knights, 4 Knights and 6 Knights. With the 6 Knights, it's always solid because even with 2 stars, we're very tanky. We can have 2 branch options now, on top of the Heartless. Knights really like Heartless because most of our damage are physical. We can go with 2 dragons or 4 trolls, which the 4 trolls does need to be level 9 or level 10, so keep that in mind. With the 4 knights, 
we can have more flexibility. We can have both of the dragons and the chores because we have less knights. We can also add things like shamans with shadow shaman. Or we can just, you know, change things up. We can take away the heartless and put in the heartless. We can try things. But you do lose a little bit of the tank ability though. For the two knights or solo dragon knight late game, we can try a hybrid build. This is when we consider the dragon mages, or we can try the forefront grace. <laughs> forefront great. Forefront grace, which will focus on the magical damage with dragon knight and Abaddon. Abaddon's spell is magical, where only knight is pure damage. So Abaddon will scale with mages. We have seen traditional knight builds before, so here we'll be looking at the four heartless troll knights. <laughs> In this build, we can see a particular square formation. The Chaos Knight usually is here to counter blinkers or assassins. The formation protects Necromancer and also the downside of knights is the magical spells that catches us that stuns us. But if you have a Shadow Shaman or maybe a unit like this on the side, they can bait spells away and Shadow Shaman is not going to die anytime soon unless the entire team looks on, up on him. But that's okay because if they try to kill him, we can flank them from the side. I have often dodged boat or maybe a disruptor stone with this shadow shaman so it's very nice to split the positioning once you get to the late game not much to be said but we do want the forefront grace and of course most of the other items is not going to be found and not going to be used next one we have we mentioned about the four knights here we have four knights and four trolls and the dragons we can see that again this is a 10 out of 10 build we don't need to rush all of that at the start so what we can do is we can aim for the four chores and heartless first with the knights, then we can add dragon knight and viper once they're two star. The shamans are optional, but we can add them once you level 10. This gives us the optimum control, disabler, healing, and just randomness. This is helpful, but the downside is if you don't have three stars, it is a little squishier. Again, shadow, sh shadow shaman is baiting on the side, while the luna is not. 3 star here. If she was 3 star, she will swap with the troll warlock. On the next night build, we're looking at 2 knights. We mentioned about 2 knights. Those are not for tankiness, but rather those knights just happen to be found as 2 star and we're just using them. The key here is with the mages. We have the warriors and knights to tank. The Abaddon actually does damage here. While the crucial units we found is Lich. Lich gives us more mana. With Crystal Maiden, we have a chance of getting more mana. Tide, Conquer and tiny, massive stunning warriors, very tanky, and we also have a bait for puck. The good things about this build is if we have a two star lich and a two star dragonite, we can be quite strong, and we are searching for many many of the purple units and tier 5 units. With only one ace unit, we can find lich to two star quite nicely once we level 9, but on the case if we don't, we want lich to be a little protected, maybe where the keeper is to be more safer. Now we can see that this one has four mages. So before we find all the mages, we don't need to add lich. And we can swap in the knights, swap in the warriors in and out if we have a clutch two star. Now also, if we have four from Greece here, we can have more of the heartless. We can have six heartless here. So this is interesting because we can build into a techies or maybe gyrocopter later to allow for the inventor explosion and massive physical AOE. So we can lose Abaddon, have Techies, and Gyro. Next build we have is Scrappies and Inventors. Usually you do want four of them. We can go into the Assassins with Scrappy. With the change of Blastseeker, we can have Sniper and Blastseeker early. And we can easily pick Bounty, maybe Queen of Pain, maybe Slug into the Assassins. If we do not find 3-star Blastseeker though, we can swap him out, and get the Sniper plus Gyro for the late game. This way we will always have the Dead Eye going, and... The Blastseeker does fall off after round 15, so we use him for the early game transition while the Scrappies are weak. Once we get to the Scrappies, we can lose him. We can go with... Oh, my throat's not ready today. <coughs> Excuse me. We can go with the two mage. We can go with the mages. The key mages are Crystal Maiden and Lich. Those are the core for the three and six mages because mage is also the ace of mage. We can start with Puck and Razor, we can swap into Keeper and Lich for the late game. We want to be aware of what other alliance and synergies we can find. With Alchemist, we can go with Necrophos, we can start up the Heartless, and we can even go for Fourth and Grace with Crystal Maiden and Lich. Scrappies can use Warlock, we saw at the start, 
This usually works with Alchemist and Witch Octa. We can also pick up Shadow Fiend with Necrophos, Disruptor, and before we find Disruptor, we make sure we have the two Warlocks down for the highest chance of Disruptor, because Disruptor is usually a clutch controller for the Scrappies. Lastly, we can have a Scrappy hybrid build. We can go with Demon Hunters and Scaled, with a 3-star Terrorblade and 3-star Slack. This can be very deadly, because Scrappies are very good in terms of, you know, lots of things. They're tanky, they can explode, and they attract lots of attention. With a 3-star Terrorblade and Slack, we have the scale to protect us from Magical, and we can take their backline and also the frontline tanks, with the pure damage and also the Master Meta Slack. <laughs> We've seen the Master Meta Slack before. <laughs> he comes back, he's like little fish chopping time, four attacks, per, four attacks per second. Very scary. Let's look at the Scrappy build variations. We set the Assassin set to start. This is a pretty nice build, because we might not find the techies, we can use a different inventor. We can use something else. We don't need the six crappies here. We don't need the blast seeker. We can use the gyro. So this allows variation. This build does not need six crappies again. With enough four, we can tank up. The key is to find three stars. This is one of those builds I stress. If you don't find three stars, you'll be much weaker in the late game. We can see here the optional is scrappies are optional, but the keys are three star. Next build we have is a scrappy warlock mage. Here we can run 2 to 3 Ace unit with Gyrocopter, Techies, and Lich, or maybe even Disruptor. So the highlight here is how much sustain we have from the Warlocks, burst damage with the Mages, and also with the Scrappy Inventors, and how tanky we are. I'm sure some of you can see the downside for this build, is that we do not have enough control. We have no stuns. If enemy Disruptor catches us, we're doomed. Also, you know, if something stuns us if a boat comes, so that's why we'll have the gyro baiting on the side. We can see the gyro is optional, we can have a disruptor here for additional healing and more stuns, more disables, maybe a 2 star tide. So in the late game you want to have at least 1 to 2 form of stuns. But without the stuns, this build does everything. It human silences, it's heartless, it heals and you know, it explodes, so it's a very good build for the scrappy mage. Next up, we have the Scrappy Hybrid build. In this build, as mentioned earlier, we have the Scaled, we have the Demon Hunters. This makes the Scrappy so much tankier. We have the 6 Scrappy, we have the Scrappy Armor with plus 9, also the Scaled 30 Magic Resistance. We can also have a Stunner here, which Scrappies don't usually have, with a Tide Hunter. We can swap the Tide for 2-star Medusa if we want to, but usually the Tide is enough. Notice this build is an 8 build, so we might not find the Techies here, any of the inventors can do, any of the scrappies can do as well. So this is can roll at level 8 because this build wants 3 stars. We want the 3 star scrappy, 3 star slack, and 3 star terrorblade. So if we're rolling at level 8, try our best to find 3 stars before we go up a level. But once we do, we can look into other alliances. We can switch out a 2 star clockwork or Timbersaw with alchemist. Then we can add a gyro, we can consider adding warlocks as well. Next build we have is Mages. I'm sure some of us have seen Mages in this meta and in their games. Six Mages are on the rise, because we want Disablers with Mages, which enables us to cast faster with the Ace of Lich. Also, the Mages are doing much, much more damage, as more people tend to pick melee units like Warriors and Knights. Six Mages can break down the Knights with enough stuns, while three Mages will have trouble. But this special three Mage build is quite interesting. So. With mages, we want AoE Disciplers, we want at least two of them. Disruptor, Tide, Conquer, Medusa and Tiny are the crucial ones. And we can also have three mages in favor for more controls with shamans and more legendary pickups. This is when we level up super early to level 9, we'll be rolling for 3 stars and 2 stars. Likely we can't find many 3 stars, so that's when we focus on the 2 stars. The first mage variation is the 6 mage build, we call it the king of the game, because there's so much control and there's so much utility with this build. The 6 mage will be there, will be those. We don't use the razor simply because he doesn't contribute that much. Even Lena can contribute with the human silence. Here we have Tide as the instant AoE cast, Disruptor to heal and also the silence, Necro to heal and with Heartless. We can have the Deucer for the scaled and also AoE stun. We have enough units to do AoE, we have the Ogre baiting in the corner. 
So Ogre can also buff himself, Ogre can do other things, Ogre is okay. If you got a 3 star Ogre, that's really good. The highlight here is, this build is so balanced. The only downside is, if enemies have way too much HP, we may be out of gas after 2 or 3 rounds of spells. But other than that, we can swap in for Enigma with one of my units out, maybe lose the Medusa. We can also add in more of the shamans by losing some of the mages to adjust for the late game. Next up, we have a very fancy team. This is one of my favorite teams. It's called the Luxury Legendary Mage Team. We can have two shamans, all the legendaries, and we'll be aiming for level 9, level 10 super fast. Of course, you don't get into this build at the start. You transition with basic units, you run a losing streak, or you try to save up. You get to level 8 and round 17, level 9 and round 21, consider level 10 and round 25 if you have enough 2 stars. Let's see what we have. We have shamans with Arcane Enigma, we have Scaled, we have the mages, we have the inventors, we have all the good things. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 ace units. This is a very fancy expensive build. Everything just needs 2 star, and this will work wonders. Dark Warden can have the Merc here to heal us, or maybe a Dagon to do more damage. Without the Gyro, we can put the Arc Warden in the corner to bait spells. The key is to get most units to 2 star, and we'll go further. We have the Warriors. We have 3 to 6 Warriors. With the buff to the 6 Warriors with 20 armor, this makes 6 Warriors super effective. We can replace the Tusk, Axe, and Juggernaut for tier 4 Warriors as we find them. Usually, I don't recommend fusing a 2-star Juggernaut, because he'll be sold for less price. I think he costs 9 gold to be bought and sells for 6 gold. The Tusk and X can be sold for the same price, so we can use those as 2-stars and transition out of them. The various branch for the Warriors can be Warlocks, Atlas, some of the Necrophobes. We can have 2 or 4 Chores, 2 or 4 Scaled. This is situational. Usually, we'll go 2 Chores and 2 Scaled. We can have the shamans with Arc Warden and also with Shadow Shaman picking up Enigma. We can have Primordials just on the side with Tiny. With three warriors, we can use everything above, but we consider even more. We can consider hunters, brownies, and even with warriors and mages. This is our first warrior variation build. This is a massive eight alliance build. In this build, we almost have everything. The highlight for this build is how solid it is. There's healing, there's sustain, there's just almost everything. There's different form of stuns, there's doom for those pesky brownies, there's troll or wall off the damage, our quarter can be damage as well. The key of achieving this build is to build six warriors, two warlock, and go further with your troll warlock swapping for other weaker warriors, and then consider the prime modules and shamans. We don't have to force shamans here, but it's a very nice late game option. Because Enigma will counter the high HP units, or even tank units like Warriors, Scrappies, and Knights. Also, the Arc Warden can be utility with a Cypher Vise, maybe can be damaged with a Dagon, also can be a healer with a Pipe or a Merc. Next, next one we have is a popular one, Before the Matter, still works in the current matter. I went up a notch with the 4 scaled to against the 6 mages, but we do not need all 4 scaled here. What we have is we have four warriors, we have the Slaughter and Tide for the scale, also Medusa and Slack. We don't need the Medusa though. So we're kicking it up a notch, but we don't need Medusa, we can have something else. The key is the number of stuns. We have Tiny, Tide and Conquer. The damage that come from Slack and Terrorblade. We really do want the three stars on the Slack and Terrorblade. As we're rolling, it's likely at level eight we can find a Medusa, if we're facing lots of mages, we can have her. Otherwise, we can consider warlocks or even more warriors. So yeah, we can see here, just for more warlocks and warriors, because sometimes two scale is enough. On the next build, we have savages. Those can be two, four, and six. The savages are interesting, because as some of us have picked up, savages works really well with a tomb. But on the backside, I played savage with a tomb, and the enemy clockwork ran over, exploded, all the zombies exploded, so did my savages. So be, be aware, if you play Tomb with the Scrappies, it can backfire. So I need to hide my Tomb in the corner in case everything explodes. Now, other than that, let's look at the proper Savage builds. 
we can have two for savages with warlocks. Those are optional. You can always go with more savages or more warlocks. The key is to have some of the three star front lines because savages are early game builds. Because most savages are tier one. If it's a tier one unit and you don't find them into three star, it's going to be troublesome because we want to sustain and do damage as we heal each other and we deal damage with bleeding. Summoning stone would be nice or maybe crucial pickups, maybe a healing wall would be nice. Savage and Hunters will be aiming for additional alliance with Heartless and Warlock or Dead Eye. Here we can have Sniper, Joranger, Lycan, or we can go into the route of the Beastmaster, Lycan, or maybe your Marana. So options are opening as we find our units. The key again is to consider how long do I want to keep Savages. With Summoning Stone we can take them late game, but without it we can just go with 2 or 4, no need to go into 6. Savages and Warriors are quite nice because you can pick up all the stunning Warriors like Tiny, Tide and Conquer. We can compensate for the lack of late game with stuns. If we stun them, we start with the bleeding. And before you know it, no matter how tanky they are, the bleeding is actually pure damage. So it stacks up, it will kill them. I've even seen a 10k Beastmaster die into the entire Savage team with enough stuns. You know the doom, finally catch your stream. Welcome, buddy. Yeah, it's a hard time zone for sure. Australia time zone, right? Yeah, with enough units, you can definitely go. You know, savages are so nice with so many lower tier units. Lastly, we have six savages. We can have the summoning stone plus arc warden. It's a great build with tombstone, of course, because arc warden images, you know, metal method, little summons can activate the tombstone into zombies. We can also have shamans and chores. So let's look into the variations. The four savage AOE warrior stunners. Now here, let's count how many stuns we have. We have Kanker, Zenkin, Tide, and Tiny. What we don't have is we don't have lots of damage. The means of damage will come from the bleeding from Longdred and Lycan. So this is where the damage lies. This build is left purposely on seven because you can open up more options. You can build into more savages or you can build into other things. Maybe more warriors with troll warrior and the trolls. Maybe shamans or maybe something else. So this is leaving options open for us. We have the six savages, shamans and troll build here. Over here, the six savages are here. The warlock starts with witch doctor and venomizer. The troll warlock enables everyone to bleed and mini stun. On top of that, we have the arc warden with enigma. Because with summoning stone, arc warden can be the backbone of damage. We have enough summoning stone units or summoners with the savage from the early game into the mid game. Then we look into the late game. For this build, we want to see Tusk, Veno, and maybe Lycan to 3 star. We can also find the Enchantress to 3 star and Launcher to 2 star. But if we do not, 2 star units are enough. The highlight here is how quickly we can save up with the savages and go into the late game a little faster. We can consider the four from Greece, but ideally we can't make use of it because there's only one icon. We can adjust on the way though. Maybe pick up a necromancer or maybe something else. Yeah, the crucial highlight here is having a summoning stone which enables everything. The next variation we have is old but classic. We have the four savage hunter warrior. Here we use tiny as the initial stunner, Joranger to buff everyone, patch to bait units away, Tusk as the blinker or the assassin bait or the tank. Lycan and Longer will be the front line. This build does not require much. This is a simplistic build that allows us to roll for three stars. We can even run four from Grace and pick up more Heartless after with Lycan. We can also swap Tiny for the Kanker as well. So this is one of those builds you're like, hey, I don't need ace units. I don't need anything. I just want my three stars. And this is when we want to roll at level seven and level eight. Usually you hit level 7 at round 17, then you go to level 8, maybe round 21, maybe round 25, depending how many units is sitting on the bench. It's always better to go to level 8 and rolling if you have a 2 star on the bench, because it, it will stop the losses and it will minimize any of the loss, because you have a stronger unit on the board. There's a few builds that we didn't mention here, which is Hunter, Elusive Assassins. We did mention them in the branch builds but not as a core build because after testing 
we have tested that elusive assassins are not so strong late game because they no longer have a late game alliance. They used to be nigh, but without the nigh, elusive just not cutting it, and also assassins do not fare well. We tried it in different games, and those builds are not the strongest in the matter. We'll be looking into tier list of the contraptions and items, alliance of the choices, and also units will be the next guide of focus for this patch. Having so much fun on this patch so far, we also have links to the games up for the about builds to demonstrate a few of the games. You can see those on Reddit, or we'll be posting those for you guys on YouTube as well. To summarize, this is a wonderful patch which allows three stars to shine, also for the quick leveling up for the Ace of Alliance. The crucial path is to decide at about round 15 or 20 if you want to be rolling or if you want to be leveling. If that is said, or if there's other players contesting it, it might be better to pick one. You can be testing those, and if this time level didn't work, you can try to roll for those builds. So lots of testing to be done, and lots of tier lists and guides to be coming for this build as well. Let me know in the comments below of what you guys think about those builds, if I tried them, do you like them, or if you have any other choices to go with the builds. Please subscribe on the YouTube channel, and also click the bell of notification for more builds to come and also support the channel with the search engine algorithm. I'll be posting more builds, more guides first with the tier list form, and also I'll be looking into some of the certain rank up builds in the future. As we find good combinations, as we found you know, the brownies with tomb, also hunters with chores, as we find those with the mini bashes, we'll be posting those for YouTube as well. To support me further on Twitch, please follow and subscribe on Twitch, and that is already a massive help. Thank you, thank you so much everyone for watching, and hopefully you enjoy this build, and hopefully you enjoy those builds. And let me know what you think. I'll be posting more of the games we found with those builds onto YouTube as well.